in a bid to strengthen Guyana's security apparatus and to promote law and order, the PPPC administration successfully piloted several bills that were passed in the National Assembly on Monday. First up was the Police Amendment Bill 2021, Bill No. 8 of 2021, that was brought by Minister of Home Affairs Robeson Ben. The amendment promises to ease tension between the Guyana police force and civilians, as the police will now be legally permitted to use less lethal force in the execution of their duties. We identify that we want to avoid situations in which the engagement moves from simply uh, engagement as couple because we've seen in many instances and they've been on Facebook and other places where persons have taken the resort of scuffling and even fighting with the police resisting arrest and unfortunately in some instances the police may have to go to what is described as lethal force. The amended police act was supported by a number of opposition members of parliament, will allow police to use less lethal weapons like nightsticks, chemical irritants, conducted electrical weapons, kinetic projectiles, and water cannon. Minister Ben told the House that the amendment is not unique to the region nor the wider world, and that it will reduce tension, injury, and death between police and those being arrested. The National Assembly also amended the Firearms Act to legally empower firearm analysts at the Guyana Forensic Science Laboratory to conduct ballistic tests on firearms and ammunition. Minister Ben told the House that the amendment will close the legal loophole that barred persons without firearm licenses from handling firearms and ammunition. The purpose of the bill, in effect, is to assure a safe chain of custody in relation to the examining, the testing of firearms and ammunition for the work of forensic applications. We now have uh, forensic laboratories for some time, and the issue is that we need to make sure that each person along the way who handles and examines and tests firearms or ammunition as part of investigation are appropriately covered under the legislation to make sure that there are no gaps, no lacunas, no opportunity for surprises when it comes to examination in the courts. Minister Ben also led the amendment of the Evidence Act to better provide the role of the officers of the Guyana Forensic Science Laboratory and other analysts when required to provide evidence for court cases. The Evidence Act has some weaknesses in relation again to questions of chain and custody and clarity of legal language in respect of how evidence is presented to a court and again it relates to the question of the appropriate insertion of language which accounts for the presence of the Ghana Forensic Laboratory and the forensic officers, the analysts in relation to the handling of evidence. And so we propose the insertions of appropriate language to make the, the legislation more secure so people could proceed in relation to the appropriate coverage for a handling of evidence. Like the amendment of the Police Act, Government Member of Parliament Sanjeev Datadin praised the amendment of the Evidence Act, noting that personnel attached to the Guyana Forensic Science Laboratory will be authorized to carry out their duties. Today also saw the amendment of the Narcotic Drugs and Psychotropic Substances Control Act to protect citizens from the use and possession of designer drugs by listing this group of drugs in the Principal Act. The intention is to ensure 
by passage of this bill that persons in possession of these substances will be charged and prosecuted accordingly. We are already seeing instances in the public by seizures by the police and the Customs Anti-Narcotic Unit. Drugs, some call Molly and other fanciful names, uh, in use in clubs, in private homes, being smuggled into the country, and we have to take the step forward to make sure that these de designer drugs the amendment was defended by Minister of Youth, Sport and Culture, Charles Ramson Jr., following claims from the APNU AFC opposition that it should include an education campaign on designer drugs. There are ongoing programs that exist to help to deal with the education of the youth and the deterrence of the use of any drugs. The government has a holistic approach to dealing with programs against the use of drugs, making sure that the police, the justice sector has the regulatory and legislative framework, and that's the reason why we're bringing the amendments. All of this happened but none of it happened in the last five years. The late afternoon session saw a number of motions passed with bipartisan support. Minister of Public Works Bishop Juan Edgel spoke in favor of the opposition motions to complete outstanding work of the Public Accounts Committee from the 11th Parliament and to adopt the report of the PAC on the examination of the nation's public accounts for 2015. The reason why the work of the Public Accounts Committee was not completed in the 11th Parliament. It was not because of our unwillingness or inability to work. But it was simply because of the successful passage of a no-confidence vote against the then government in December of 2018. We would want to ensure that the accounts of Guyana are examined, the public officers give the necessary explanations, clarifications, and reasons, and at no stage at all would the reports of the Auditor General of Diana be left in a hiatus. The sitting wound down with the passage of a motion led by Minister of Human Services and Social Security and Chairperson of the PSCSS, Dr. Vindya Prasad. That motion saw the minister gain the support of the opposition to adopt all outstanding work of the committee. The work of that committee was also brought to a halt by dissolution of parliament in late 2019. Several papers and reports were also laid in the National Assembly on Monday, in addition to submission of written answers to questions raised by the opposition.